Nation versus the City of Boston. Mr. Decker. Good morning. Brian Decker. I represent the Plaintiff's Boston Police Patrolman's Association in this case. At the outset, it's important to note that the BPPA doesn't support or condone racial profiling, which is the selection of a person for an enforcement action, in this case a traffic stop, based on that person's race or another indelible characteristic. Racial profiling is discriminatory and also not a proper or even effective law enforcement technique. This case isn't about whether racial profiling is bad. It is. Isn't it about what, among other things, towns and cities can do when there's evidence, data, supporting that there is a disproportionate number of minorities or women or whatever it is? Well, it's about what the legislature directed towns and communities to do in gathering information. But I see nothing in the legislative history that suggests that the intent here was simply to do nothing. Well, I don't think that our position is that the towns and the communities should do nothing. Rather, I think that our position is that the statute sets forth two specific phases of data collection. And importantly, the statute also very clearly identifies the protection of officer and driver identifications as an important concern. And so the question is, was it only a concern in phase one, as the defendants argue, or is it a concern in both phases one and phase two? And we would argue that the legislative intent would show that it's a concern in both phases. It's important to understand why a town or community is in phase two of the statute. The first phase of the statute culled information from citations, warnings, and also arrest records. And it was culled by the RMV, the Registry of Motor Vehicles, and sent for analysis to Northeastern University. Now, that information was analyzed, and certain communities were shown to have statistical disparities. They were not shown to be racially profiling. And this is important, because the – and Northeastern candidly admits it – that they don't know what causes these statistical anomalies. That's precisely the point. That's precisely the point. And so the legislature said, we're not going to just do a scattershot. We're going to identify, by valid statistical testing, where there appears to be a problem. In other words, if there was no statistical – if there's no statistical impact, those towns and cities, no further action is required, correct? Correct. And in this – and then, for those where there is a statistical impact, you go to the second phase. And what happens in that second phase? In the second phase, we argue it's not a punitive phase. In the second phase – No, this has got nothing to do with punitive. This has to do with identifying what the problem is. Correct. I think the legislature well understood that data in and of itself doesn't really tell you what the problem is. Correct. Or whether there is a problem, for that matter. Exactly. And I would argue that in the second phase, which the legislature limits to one year – it's only one year, and the legislature provides no direction to communities as to what you do with that information or what you do at the end of the year. That actually is surprising to me. What is the plan? What is to be done with this one-year, second-round data collection? I have no idea, Your Honor. Has the Executive Office of Public Safety announced what's going to – where do these forms go? They can go in a file, never to be looked at again, and the legislative mandate is satisfied. That surely cannot have been the legislator's intent. I agree. And that's why we would argue that after the one-year period, the legislature's properly said, well, now that you have the information, the municipalities, using the broad managerial prerogative that the defendants describe in their briefs, should then develop the appropriate response. Where is there anything to suggest that the legislature was saying this should be left solely in the hands of the local towns and cities? Well, when they say that – when they prescribe nothing to be done. They do indicate – they do suggest that these communities in consultation and working with the Executive Office of Public Safety should develop effective methods to identify and eradicate racial profiling. That's in Section 2, and that's clear. Of course that's in Section 2, and I think it indicates, at least, you know, to my mind, that the legislature understood that there may be very local concerns or there may be statewide, but there was nothing to suggest that the Executive Office of Public Safety is somehow out of the picture at the end of Section 10, is there? 
No, no. And, but they're, they're not. Well, in this case, the city of Boston has decided to do something. And, and they, they have asked that the police officers identify themselves on these on certain forms Correct. during this second year of, of collection. And yes. is there anything in the statute that says that the city can't do that? Yes, we argue that Section 9 says that they can't do where, that. Where does it say that? Well, Section 9 says that in the dat data collection shall not identify the officer. Data acquired under this, under this section, and that's the rub, that it's, that's where the ambiguity comes. For, for statistical purposes. For statistical purposes. Well, st there are no statistical purposes in the second phase of collection of data. Well, but I think that's, that's, that's parsing it a little bit. I mean, it's parsing the, it. That's exactly what to, the statute you says. You have to analyze the information to determine, with or without the officer identification, you have to, you have to analyze the information statistically to determine, even if you know, even if you're looking at the very individual officer level, there's still statistical analysis necessary to cull the data from the second phase. Could, could a member but, of the public try to get the, uh, the citations that are issued in every case? Yes. And so the, 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 this, your suggestion that, that the police officers not identify themselves is really something that – it's information that the public can get anyway. No. They can't um, get it from the uh, – Well, well because, because, again, in Section 10, you're not – No, I'm not talking about Section 10. I'm talking about the, 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 the ch point. Chapter 66, Section 10. The, Correct. The Freedom of Information Act. Yes. And they can get the, the officer's identification under the Freedom of Information Act by obtaining the different citations. For citations, yes. <laughs> Does the CC number that you're proposing to be used, is, can the, can, under the Freedom of Information Act, can a citizen find out what a particular officer's CC number is? Most likely. So, well, no, the, well, actually, uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. There, a CC number isn't the officer's number. The CC number identifies the incident. It doesn't identify, it identifies the incident, and then it would be need to be cross-referenced, contained within that database would be the officer's identification. So a CC number is an officer 10. It's, it's, off, it's officer 10 at 11 p.m. doing a certain thing. So under the Freedom of Information Act, a citizen can obtain all the information that you're suggesting they should not get. They would, they would be able to put it together through, through some deductive reasoning, yes. Okay. But – Mr. – well, May I ask a, well, go ahead. a, a of course. question? Uh, does, does the mass uniform citation include an officer's identification number? Yes, Your Honor. Well, then how do you interpret the language in Section 10 that says this information shall include the reason for the stop in addition to the other information already required under the Massachusetts uniform citation? What does that mean? Well, I guess, again, I think that, what does that mean? I think it, it means that you need to read it in conjunction with Section 9. But, well, now, it, you, just, you just told me yes. that the Mass Uniform Citation includes an officer's identification number. As well and, as the And this says in Section 10 that this information shall include the reason for the stop in addition to the other information already required under the Massachusetts Uniform Citation. So wouldn't that include a way of identifying the police officer? And, and one would assume it would also include identifying the driver, um, who is obviously going to be identified on a Massachusetts citation, so we know who to send the bill to. It is curious that the form proposed by the executive office does not include the identity of the driver. Well, the identity of the driver for these purposes may not be relevant in this sense. The identity of the driver doesn't necessarily tell you the gender, the race, uh, or any other characteristic. And this is clear so that <clears throat> there's no reason why databases can't cross-check. The purpose of, of, of individual identification is the one you've just given, correct? Namely, we know to whom to send the citation. Absolutely. Now we're collecting data for a different purpose. Well, is it really a different purpose? <clears throat> What's well, the purpose? The purpose here is to sort of further explore with a broader pool of responses, because now we're not just talking about citations. We're talking about all stops. Exactly. So it's a much, uh, it's a much more onerous uh, process. It actually requires a whole new process to be put in place, new forms, new reporting systems to sort of further study uh, exactly what's going on. Exactly, Your Honor. And, and our position is that it's at the end of that period that 
the towns can then analyze that information and determine where enforcement action is necessary. Um, but Mr. Mr. Decker, let me ask you. If section 9 says individual data acquired under this section, and the word section there is very confusing because there's no data collection under section 9. Isn't Correct. that right? Isn't it very possible that that section 9 was at one time the last line of section 8 and that somehow the last line or a separate paragraph of section 8 and that somehow that just became a separate section and then wouldn't that be a very a much more sensible reading then? It, it would, but I don't believe the legislative history shows that, Your Honor. The legislative history, and we've included in the appendix at least one of the prior versions of the law, included this. It, didn't, it only had one phase of data collection. It basically ended after Section 8. But it included Section 9, I forget what section it was in that, in that version, as an entirely separate standalone section. And Section 9 always had the word section in it as a standalone section? Unfortunately, yes. Because, again, the crux of the issue Was is Section 9 at any time um, more comprehensive? Yes. In the prior version okay. of the statute, there was a second sentence to Section 9, which indicated that the information couldn't be used um, in any uh, – it basically couldn't be used in a discrimination action to show uh, 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 racial – to show malintent. Um, I, I believe that would the, – the fact that that was dropped, Your Honor, actually shows that the, the – the intent was that the, if the officer is not identified, why do you need language saying you can't use the, no, that, the language the intent against them? Of, the intent of that is because employers have been put in very difficult positions on occasions where they try to see, I'm not talking just about state employers, but private employers, they try to ascertain if there are barriers to advancement or there's some disparate impact. And what, and what the courts have been trying to do is to make sure that, you, that the people who are trying to address what might be a problem then are not penalized for being good employers by having that data used as the basis of a discrimination suit. That seems to me to be what the purpose is. Well, again, though, Your Honor, I don't think the, the absence of that in the final Section 9 indicates any desire to provide less protection to the officer information. Now, the issue here is not whether or not the officer is going to be the defendant in a discrimination suit. The issue is whether or not entities can deal with what may be patterns of disparate impact. And, and we, we would argue, Your Honor, that they should, uh, should deal with that. But they should deal with that within the context that the legislature set forth. And, and, and in the second... And, and it, indeed, this entire, this entire act is directed to data collection, not to further action, presumably based on all of this data collection. Both cities, in coordination with the Executive Office of Public Safety, can proceed with action plans or remedial plans, if necessary, or further examinations. Exactly, Your Honor. And, and it gets to sort of a point. I think the defendants... Well, well do, you, do you agree that the goal of the Act, uh, as stated in Section 2, is to ensure that adequate efforts are being made to identify and eliminate any instances of racial and gender profiling by police officers in the performance of their official duties? I, I do uh, well, agree. Well, then if you agree with that, don't you need to know who the police officers are who are making the stop? Well, I think you need to know it at some point, but this statute, I would suggest, the two phases of information collection would go more to the identification. And the silence of the legislature as to how to go about enforcement, I think, would suggest that at that point, at the end of the, and that, again, it's, it's the one year. Why did they make it such a short period, and why did they not prescribe any action to be taken with the information once gathered? In Section 8, they're clear what, what to be done with, what's to be done with the information. In Section 10, it's very vague. It's not very vague. It's, there's nothing. Mr. And Dacre, may I ask you this? If the Commissioner of the City of Boston, the Commissioner of Police, decided that without, um, w without this act, uh, she wanted to collect data, to ascertain whether there was racial profiling, and she wanted the information to include the reason for the stop and any other information required under the Massachusetts Uniform Citation. Could she do that? Um, subject to any bargaining obligation that might arise under right. 158, yes. So you are telling me that the legislature is taking away from commissioners <coughs> and others responsible for law enforcement authority that they already had. There's no claim here, is there, that this violates any bargaining authority? 
No, and I, I, I don't believe that's the case. I think what the legislature is doing is telling the communities to gather this information because they weren't doing it on, your own, on their own. All the right, commissioner so in Boston was not taking this so problem seriously enough. At the very least, they have to delay taking any action. Well, they have to take that action not in conjunction with gathering information <laughs> under this statute. Well, this, and this statute this is very clear. I mean, this statute is very clear. I don't know whether it's taking away or giving authority, but it says that the, the, the data collected may not reveal or is, is, may not contain information that will reveal the identity of any individual or the officer. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's, I take it there's no question but this form is being promulgated under this statute. That, that's absolutely correct. Right. So, I mean, it, if, if in fact the legislature intended that confidentiality provision to apply, it, it has nothing to do with whether it's taking away or adding power to the police commissioner. Yes, Your Honor. That's, that's our position. Thank you, Mr. Day. Thank you very much. <sighs> Ms. Ambrick. Good morning. My name is Amy Ambrick, and I represent the Boston Police Department in this action. This court has made a few good points about the legislative intent and the structure of the statute in this instance, and I think that that's really where we need to focus. While the test for the preliminary injunction includes two other elements, uh, I think that this case falls on the language of the statute specifically, as well as the legislative intent. When, deter when this court determines uh, the meaning of a statutory provision, the court must read it as a whole to provide an internal consistency and also use common sense and sound reason when doing that interpretation. And why wouldn't that, why, if, if in Section 9, the language, this section, which we all acknowledge is meaningless, it can either be Section 8 or this Act. Why isn't this Act just as reasonable as Section 8? Uh, specifically, Your Honor, because in Section 9 it states, this section shall be used for statistical purposes and may not con contain information that may reveal the identity of any individual who is stopped or any law enforcement officer. Right. It specifically uses the language this section. The term section would imply that it's meant to relate to something other than the entire act. Because in other parts of the act, it uses that term, act, as opposed to section. In addition, Your Honor, it uses the term this, as opposed to these. Therefore, implying that it's meant to, um, meant to refer to one section as opposed to more it's than It's clearly an error. It's clearly an error, right? I don't know. This section is clearly an error. It may not be drafted perfectly, Your Honor, and that's why we're here today. Right. But I'm, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's an error. Potentially more words could have been added to make us understand it more clearly. But I, the, this, th let me move on to the next part of the statute that's important, and then I'll go back okay. to the, this section aspect, which says shall only be used for statistical purposes. There's nothing in Section 10 that says that the data collected has to be used for statistical purposes. The statistical analysis is provided for <coughs> specifically with the data collected in Section 8, not the data collected in Section 10. Therefore, both the this section language and the only use for statistical purposes would lead us to believe, and in fact makes it pretty clear when looking at it in full context, that Section 9 was meant to refer specifically Have you, to Section Have Are you 8. aware of any effort over at the legislature to attempt to straighten this out? Or has it just been uh, sort of left here for us to do it? It's been left here for this court to determine, Your Honor. Uh, additionally, Which, of course, if they don't like what we do, they can then change it. Potentially, yes, Your Honor. Mm. Uh, in addition to the specific language of Section 9, I would also look to the legislative intent. Um, it's specifically stated in Section 2, it states that this statute specifically was promulgated to ensure that adequate efforts are being made to identify and eliminate any instances of racial and gender profiling by police officers in their official duties. It doesn't say police departments. It specifically says police officers. Again, when reading the statute as a whole, one would take that to accept that we then, as a police department, can collect the identity of individual officers so that we can do what we can to <coughs> identify and eliminate any instances of racial and gender profiling. Well, uh, are you suggesting that your department is incapable of doing that unless this information is collected on this form? 
Absolutely not, Your Honor. In fact, I would put forth that we could have such a campaign on our own. The police Correct. commissioner at any given point in time could, uh, aside from the statute, request that all officers, when they do motor vehicle stops, fill out such a form. Of, of course. And right. is that what you're doing? It, well, it just happened. No, it, we're going abiding by the statute. But we intend to take that information and do some sort of analysis to try. Obviously, we're going to try and use the information as provided by for by the statute in some productive, constructive way to attempt to, as the statute states, identify and eliminate any instances of racial profiling. Ms. Amberwick, you constantly refer to legislative history and then point to the language of the statute. Legislative history is something beyond the language of the statute. When was the statute enacted? This statute was acted in 2000, Your Honor. Was there a report filed with the legislature prior to the enactment of the statute? Was there a conference? Were there proceedings? Were there hearings? Your Honor, to the best of my knowledge, there was a task force um, through, that EOPS was a big part of in promulgating the statute prior to its enactment. And as my brother counsel alluded to, there was a prior bill um, that was put forth that was then amended to come up with this. Was there a report of the task force? There was um, meetings post-enactment, but I, I don't know of one prior to the enactment, Your Honor. Have you tried to ascertain whether there was a report of the task force before the statute? In, in conversations with the Executive Office of Public Safety, yes, Your Honor. Has there been an attempt to provide the court with any such task report? No, Your Honor, I don't know of a task report. Do we report. know whether the task report was distributed to the members of the legislature? I don't, Your Honor. Do we know whether the chairman of the task report testified before the legislature? I don't, Your Honor. Is there some way to find that out? It's my understanding that I, I, there, there were not, if there were hearings prior to, uh, the Executive Office of Public Safety would probably be best to answer that question for you. And in conversations between the two of us, I'm, I'm not aware of, of such a hearing. <coughs> Before the statute was changed, or I should say the proposed legislation was changed to add this second phase of data collection, um, how, was it, how was it framed? Where, where was the language in Section, what, in section 9? You're, you're speaking specifically of the prior bill, Your Honor? Right. The prior bill, <coughs> let me just pull up the specific language for you, Your Honor. The prior bill specifically stated, it was then Section 3, it only, as spoken by my brother counsel, it only alluded to one phase of data collection as opposed to two. It was Section 3 in that bill, which stated, data acquired under this section shall be used only for research or statistical purposes and may not contain information that may reveal the identity of any individual who is stopped or any law enforcement officer. So Section 9, and actually, um, and this was contrary to the impression I got from prior counsel, but it may have been my fault. Section 9 was actually part of another section, but it was Section 3 that it was part of before. So it was part of another section and just got, in the end, pulled off by itself. Um, well, was that, is that so, or was it a separate section? It's just a separate section in the prior bill. It's just referred to as Section 3 as opposed to now Section, section nine. 9. Oh, okay. So All it right. was a separate section at that time as well. But there was additional language also that data acquired under the section shall not be used in any legal or administrative proceeding to establish an inference of discrimination on the basis of particular identifying characteristics. And in fact, so the taking out of that language would lead one to believe that the data that might be acquired under the second section or even that section could be used for whatever purpose is deemed reasonable to identify and eliminate instances of racial profiling. Thank you, Ms. Amblin. Thank you. Ms. Klausnitz. Good morning, Your Honor. Susan Prosnitz for the Secretary of Public Safety here in the courtroom today. Also with me is Christopher Pohl. Uh, I'd first like to uh, uh, follow up on the question you asked, uh, Chief Justice, regarding the legislative history. The Executive Office of Public Safety did not participate in a task force prior to the enactment of the, of the law. The Mass Chiefs Association of Police was actively involved in um, the discussion of enactment of the law, and I think that is uh, well briefed in the amicus I've submitted that. by that association. The report that they've attached is one, obviously, that is dated 2004. Were there legislative hearings? 
I believe that there were legislative hearings, but I, I am not aware of the... Do you know the, whether any material was provided yeah. to the members of the... I, the I do not think any material was submitted to the court, and I do not believe that a report, that there's any legislative report in the record. No, that wasn't my question. My question was, was there any material submitted to the members of whichever committees of the House and Senate uh, conducted the hearings? I don't believe there was material submitted by the Executive Office of Public no, Safety. No, no, I do believe... Not the Executive that, Office. My question was, was any material, to your knowledge, submitted to the members of the respective yeah. committees that conducted I, I, I'm not sure, Your Honor, we can follow up on that. I do know that there was active discussions between the Chiefs of Police Association and the legislature, and we can submit something to the court if it would be helpful to verify whether there's any actual record of that, but not to my knowledge. Well, the, the, the issue that I'm getting at is legislative history is often helpful in informing yes. what might be a, a two, word, um, two words that appear to be a little out of place. And so yeah. one looks yeah. at whether they were prior yes. drafts, but one also yeah. looks to see <coughs> what the legislature had in mind. Yes, Your Honor, and, and, we, and we, did, we did look for that information. We did not initially find anything. We will verify that, that with this court that there is no um, report of the nature you're discussing. Thank you. Um, Where did the whole notion of Section 9 come from, this uh, sort of uh, confidentiality or... Uh, mm -hmm. Protection of identity mm -hmm. section. Where did yes. the notion come from? I, I believe, Your Honor, that the notion um, uh, certainly arose during discussions and when the bill was being put forth in the legislature. Much of that is uh, addressed in the brief that was submitted by the Mass Chiefs of Police. Um, in that brief, they discuss the fact that um, uh, as a as a compromise effort to get the bill through the legislature, that section um, was included in in the bill. Well, how do you reconcile Section 9 and Section 10? Uh, I, I think those are, are easily reconciled, Your Honor. Uh, Section 10 was, was added to provide sort of um, – th that's where the purpose of the statute would truly be effectuated. Section 8, where the data c was collected and gathered and, and then submitted to Northeastern University for analysis, that's truly an information gathering process to identify police departments. That process was not going to allow us to effectuate the purpose of the law, identifying and eliminating racial profiling. The only way to get to that is if you have officer identification. And in fact, today's science, our, our academic experts tell us that the only way to effectively conduct racial profiling data analysis is to measure officer against officer. Was this, uh, was this statute drawn from a statute in any other state? I mean, these kinds of studies are going on in New Jersey, New York, all over yes. the place now. Yes. So sometimes we look to another state and sort of copy it up here. Mm -hmm. Did we do that here? Uh, I believe that bits and, and I don't know if this is an exact match to another statute, but certainly there are other states, 12 others in total, that are, are um, doing statewide data analysis. There are also 5,000 police jurisdictions that are doing the analysis. No other state that I am aware of um, prohibits the collection of officer identification by a police department. Did you look at the other states? Yes, yes. Okay. I take it that, and I, and I read with interest uh, the, the, the brief of the, um, you know, the Massachusetts Major Chief, City Chiefs of Police. I take it that in part uh, their description of what happened uh, has not been rebutted by uh, the plaintiffs here, correct? Um, in terms of the negotiations with the legislature. Yes, there have, there have not been further negotiations with, with the legislature. I mean, one of the things which I mentioned before, which is of concern to all employers, public and private, is when they begin to collect data and to identify uh, patterns so that they can correct their own workplace uh, inadequacies or insufficiencies, mm -hmm. is that they not leave themselves open to um, third-party penalties, correct? Yes. Okay. So at, at best we can say that the legislature said to the extent that you are seeking to protect yourself from third-party liability, we are not going to go along with that. Th that. That's correct. I think one of the key aspects of, of addressing legislation is 
allowing, of addressing racial profiling is allowing police departments to hold their officers accountable. They can't do that effectively without knowing what activities the officers are engaged in. Um, to your knowledge, has anyone addressed to the legislature the question or uh, put to them the problem that the words this section and section mm -hmm. 9 are ambiguous? Mm -hmm. uh, at, there is no bill pending before the legislature to address that um, seeming ambiguity, but what I would like to say in further response to your question, question is that I believe it's clear if you look at a combination of the placement of Section 9 in the law, the legislature did not move it to the end when it did amend the previous version of the bill. It remained where it was. Secondly, But if that's true, why didn't they say Section 8? This only applies to Section 8. Uh, uh, I mean, this section yes, means yes. this section. Uh, again, in hindsight, could, could virtually every statute be written more clearly? Yes. But I don't think we, are, we need to look only at the placement of Section 9 in the law. If we also look, I, I've, I have... Um, if, we, if we also look at sections 2, 8, 9, and 10 collectively, they clearly su suggest an intent for the collection to apply to section 8 only. Um, if you were to take the section numbers out of the statute and read this narratively, I think there's no question, and I don't think we're in this court today. If you then add to that section 2, the purpose, which again, cannot be effectuated if we do not get to officer identification. This, the words under this section look like a typo to me. It, 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 it could be a typo. It could be careless drafting. It, there there I, could I, be any number of things. But that's where we also go to the statutory construction rule of avoiding absurd results. And, and what I'd like to close with is that if this, this court were to support the plaintiff's interpretation, we would create a, a – um, an absurd two-tiered system between what would be available to police chiefs and the public for citations and what would be available for the traffic stop form. Everything on the citation, including officer ID and race, was available long before Chapter 228 went into effect and remains available. The plaintiff's argument would create a different level of protection for the citation than for the traffic stop form. I, we, can I ask you a question about that? I, I've seen the traffic stop form. There, there's... There's nothing in there about the identification of the driver. Uh, in response to that, Your Honor, um, there, there, there are two things I say in response to that. Um, first of all, the information for data analysis that is necessary is there, the race of the driver. Secondly, the plate number that can, can um, connect us up to the driver in addition to looking at underlying source documents like the citation or incident reports. Same is true for the police officer. Underlying documentation, reference to incident, will, will reveal right. that. And, and again, the, um, the purpose of this statute isn't to identify who was the victim of, the, of racial profiling, but to identify who is engaged in racial profiling. And also whether there's racial profiling, profiling going on. Yes. I mean, surely the Northeastern study, frankly, says this is not, this doesn't mean we found racial profiling. This just means there's statistical issues that need to be further explored. So phase two is an expanded study which includes all stops, not just traffic citations. So it expands it out and then sort of leaves it, you know, air. But why isn't that part of the study? Um, well, first of all, Your Honor, there, there is no um, provision in section, in section 10 for any further statewide study, collection, or analysis. Um, secondly, it's clear that that is added. And if you look at that section, by the way, as compared to the final section of the original version of the bill, which did just call for a further study being submitted to the Attorney General's office, Section 10 is, is clearly a tougher provision. It's, it's designed to get at the heart of the problem. It's designed to put police chief departments on notice that it's time, they need to take action. And by the way, it doesn't necessarily mean punishment of an officer. It can mean training. It can be awareness. It can be just being able to explain selective enforcement activities. It seems okay. to leave egg on the face of a department after the data is collected and analyzed, and then Section 10 seems to leave it up to the department to wipe the egg off its face. I believe that's correct, Your Honor. It's, it's that, that's the opportunity for the department that is effectively on notice through Phase 1 to take corrective action through any number of steps, but mainly by being able to make sure that there are not a few bad apples in their department um, who need to be individually addressed. There could be any number of explanations for the information in Northeastern study, but that's the opportunity to fix the problem broadly. 
Thank you, Ms. Plaza. Thank you.